and you need to make us all be able to be visible. Oh. It says host has stopped the videos. That's interesting. Don't know why that would be. One moment. All right, that should work now. I don't know how to save that. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we are good to go. Okay, so we're live. So I'm we're open. just loading the YouTube now. It's still processing. And then we're now live. Okay, welcome to the January 7th meeting of the Village of Mamaroneck Zoning Board of Appeals. I wanna wish everyone a happy new year and hopefully this will be a good year for us all in every way, notwithstanding recent events. Um, and I also wanna say that we have a new member who's been appointed, but he has not yet uh, been sworn in, uh, so Dave Newfeld will not be here anymore. And finally, I want to thank Doug Dunaway for his service and for his, you know, for his assistance, his service as a member of the board. Okay, the first item on the agenda tonight is um, public hearing on 360A Mount Pleasant Avenue, an application for a special permit or renewal of a special permit. Is the applicant here? Okay, I'm adding them as a panelist. I'm sorry, if the applicant could raise your hand, I can promote you to panelist to present. Does he know how to raise his hand? Or should we do a different instruction? There's, who is Ed Marciante? His name is showing up oh, maybe on you're uh, just on mute. the screen. But unmute in the corner. There we go. There, go down here in the corner and you can put the video. There. there. We go. Okay. This is Lisa Seneth. She's the actual owner of the store. Hi. Hi. Hello. Okay, do you want to present your application, explain what it is and why you're here? For a special permit. For a special permit? Well, actually, let me let me explain. We had gotten a special permit, what was it, about two years ago? Yeah. For uh, cooking in the store. Um, you know, we had the whole installation done, inspected, and everything was good. We had issued the permit, and it's up for renewal. So okay. that's why we're here. Okay, and can you just sort of just describe for anybody who's listening who doesn't know what it is that you are doing, just renewing the, what, uh, what you yeah, are doing a small, as a It's a small uh, deli in the back and it's a very small grill. We got a, uh, maybe a two, two by two grill and you just make uh, um, small breakfast in the morning and maybe some, uh, you know, some lunches and stuff and that's about it. Um, does there, um, is there anyone on the board wants to ask the applicant any questions? This, this a, was actually question. done about, like I said, two years ago. Um, I actually filed for the plumbing and this was all inspected by Hugo Perez, um, fire department in Mamaronek, uh, fire inspector and done and approved. Um, we've been operating for two years with it and it just happened to come up for renewal this year. So we, uh, you know, went to the procedure. We started actually with Betty Ann and started the whole procedure back in the fall. And uh, I guess it just kind of get got dragged through here. I, I do want to say before makes me that we really appreciate the fact that yeah. unlike many people, you have filed your application for renewal timely, really in time, you made it. And that's really great. I'm sorry, Meg, go ahead. I was going to say the same thing and I'm impressed with that. And it also shows that you mean to um, abide by the code. So that's just terrific. Um, this application was on a work session a couple of months ago. 
Um, and then it was off for some reason, it didn't show up on the agenda. It was, I think back in November and we were asked if we needed to see anything else. And I had made the point that you, uh, you kindly gave us a police report um, with no violations, but the police report only went up to July. And I had suggested that perhaps we should get an, one that's up to date, has a few more months to it. Um, did you get notice of that? Did anybody inform you of that? And do we have enough? No, the reason why it, it, it kind of stopped was um, the gentleman prior that was just let go. Um, what was his name? William. William, yeah. William. William got involved after Betty Ann left. And when William got involved, he stopped the whole procedure. And when I was, I spoke to him numerous times from November on, uh, yeah, maybe late October, November. And he just kept pushing it off. He says, you know, I'll speak to everybody about it. It's too early, he said. So he kept pushing it off and pushing it off and pushing it off. And then um, he had contacted us maybe a week before and said, okay, we're gonna go. And we sent everything out and it, it kind of got a little messed up. The, the letters were wrong. And it, it just wasn't coordinated correct. So the and letter had the incorrect Amber. date that was sent to the app, the neighbors. So it had the yeah, wrong date. Yeah. Amber and I went back and forth. We got everything squared away and we redid the entire thing and sent it back out. So I, I guess you had originally thought you were going to be applying sometime in the summer and, and correct. asked for the police correct. report. This and then it was supposed to be back in the delayed. fall. But well, I don't, I don't went, know if anybody uh, pays. It just, it doesn't look like any problems. I was just noticing that we got it and it's, it's not, you know, it's, there's some months there. So yeah, when they filed it, when they filed it originally, it was for the September meeting, but I don't know if you recall the September meeting had six applications and already was already past midnight. And since he had plenty of time on this application because the renewal wasn't up, I understand. we, it was delayed. And then it, things, I guess, got lost in the, yeah, yeah, I spoke to Amber about that and we just decided let's just redo everything, go forward and get it right. <laughs> well, and, and you wanna, why don't you ask, uh, since Meg is concerned about it, let me ask you, have you been issued any violations since Ab July? Absolutely not. No, there's no, been no problems or violations. I actually, I, I actually checked with Charlotte today and she confirmed that there's no open violations on that, on that site. Okay, great. So um, I have a question that might be for council. Um, I, as I understand it, um, there was actually a food establishment or a deli even before you, a different ownership, correct? And correct. then you came and we this part, now you- We purchased it, yeah. Was, it, so, it was so it's been for some time. Mini yeah. And then it would change yeah. to Ivan's Mini Mart. And, 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 and you've, it doesn't seem that you have, we'll see here if we hear from anybody in the public, doesn't sound like you have any complaints, um, but I noticed that you have no, off street parking whatsoever. Um, and usually with food establishments, there's some sort of requirement for uh, off street parking. Um, I wonder if that was, there was a variance um, that was granted for the delis before you, you know, and then it's, it's, it stays with the use and the property and then everything's fine. Um, I just didn't find any mention of it, like why uh, there's no parking. And I would, I would just like to note like, well, it had a parking variance granted in a certain time of, at a certain point. Um, so uh, just, I don't know whether, you know, if, if, if we have no evidence of a parking variance, how we're supposed to proceed. And yet it would seem unfair if it was already granted a special permit and it's not having any um, complaints. So it's just I, a very small, I mean, in and out, there's no tables. Right, so it could very well be that we would say it's, it's plenty of street parking and then it's not a problem, but normally you have to, have had a variance to say that you don't require any on street parking. Or, or it was a pre-existing non-conforming. Absolutely, absolutely. It would also I, allow it to have. And yeah. I, I don't recall when it was there, but we pro the answer was probably the conclusion that it was pre-existing would have been my guess is because it's been there a long time, but I don't know the answer for sure. Hi everyone, Charlie Gottlieb, um, your Hi. new land use counsel from Whiteman, Osterman and Hannah. Um, I did also, I didn't see anything in the file related to parking, but it sounds like you're in an existing structure and you took over a similar use. Sure. So with that said, um, I would be comfortable saying that the parking situation is pre-existing non-conforming. Um, okay. The parking issue would have been an issue when the building was built. Um, and now they are just continuing a use, a prior use. Yeah. So 
Would it have been when it was built or when the other prior special, if it was a special permit for the prior food establishment, unless it didn't so, require one because the it, it, it proceeded when a special permit was required for that use? Right, it, 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 it could have been either. Um, it sounds like you guys were issued a building permit. Is that correct for the renovation? Well, yeah, I, f I actually filed it. Um, prior to this, there was no cooking. Um, and then I filed it with the town. I was the licensed plumber. Okay. Um, and then I proceeded the entire thing. Uh, we got it inspected and we got, uh, like I said, Hugo Perez mm -hmm. was the fire inspector at the time. And he, uh, he came down, approved everything, and, you know, we moved forward. And then they issued us the special permit. Um, I would believe, I guess, it's a temporary one for two years. or, or I'm not quite sure how that worked back then. But we actually went up to the town meeting, and we stood in front of all, everybody. And, and, you know, then they issued the permit without any issue. Um, the special permit was a, was a temporary pending yeah. to make sure that there were no issues. Right. And then the board will issue what usually will issue um, either a new or for, you know, whatever period the board feels appropriate, right. whether it's and that, permanent. That's where we're at now. So, right. so the, the parking issue would have been picked up when you filed for your building permit. Uh, if the building inspector looked for it, if it was not a pre-existing non-conforming use. That said, um, you know, it's the board's decision. If, if you would like to have a little bit more in the record as to what the available parking for is. It sounds like you're not a heavy user when it comes to parking. No. Um, you know, you can inquire about the permitting history of the building to see what the story is with the existing parking. Right. It never seems to be an issue. There's parking across the street, in front, on the side, across the street, you know, and it's been fairly... Um, yes, you know. I'm not raising this because I think there is an issue. I'm raising it just because Clearly in the code food establishments, they're supposed to have some off street parking and I just didn't see oh. you know, any evidence as to where the variance was, or as you said, perhaps it was pre-existing non-conforming use, similar use that it inherited. It is a very legitimate question um, and, and one that can easily be looked into and resolved if the board would like, would like that to happen. Uh, board members, I'm fine with, with approving it as is since it was already issued a special permit. The issue wasn't raised. Um, if the board members want to look at it before it is, if it is approved, then we should do that. So uh, uh, Abby and Greta, and Meg would like to look. Greta and Abby, what would you like to do? I, I mean, agree with Meg, I think for completeness, um, we should do it. Okay, Abby. I, I mean, I'm okay, like you, Robin, moving forward, but I'll defer to, you know, well, I don't you know how it take works. a straw poll and we could have the straw poll like contingent upon getting some information by the next time. I don't think, I don't think we can have a straw poll. I think we can't do that at this point because um, you've raised the issue. So now if we're going to get information and if for some reason they never, it was never non-conforming or it was never a previously legal, legitimate. It was somehow missed at some point, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago when it was first opened. We can't approve it without that. They'd have to then go through the process of whatever the process would be, getting a variance or what they would need to Probably do. Probably getting so, a parking variance by claiming so they have I enough think, parking. So I think that is, uh, so if that's what you, if, if that's what the board members want to do, then I think that's what we will have to do. Might, looks I, like we're split. Oh. might I suggest that you continue with the process and the public hearing this evening. Um, and then at the next meeting, hopefully this issue will be resolved or you'll have a path towards um, how to resolve it. Um, and then you can take it from there. I think there's nothing to resolve at this. I mean, there, what's to resolve is whether or not they were ever legally allowed to open without any parking. It's a right. simple question. So. The process is now done. We'll finish the public hearing. We'll see if there's anybody from the public who wishes to speak. But based on um, what Meg and Greta have raised, we are going to need the village to look into the question of whether or not the parking was, the lack of parking was legal when it was first open. I, I, excuse me for one sec. Are you talking about like the entire deli? Or, or the entire uh, deli Mart, as a store? Mini Mart? The, Entire, well, let's go through the, the entire, well, let's go through this question. The entire deli serves food, right? Before you did cooking, you could. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, that makes it a food service establishment. Under well, the definition. when you say food, serve food. I mean, we, we, we didn't serve cooked food. We have, you know, just, just you know, mini mart stuff, you know, yes. coffee, this, that, beer, um, you know, canned establishment. Food. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but a food service establishment uh, under the code is any use which of requires, which includes, so let me ask you if you are a food service establishment, any use which includes the serving of food and or beverages that re requires an eating place permit or is otherwise required no. by either county or state law to be licensed. No, we, we don't need here. Then it's not a food no. service establishment. We don't need here. You, you cook, you cook and you're serving individual servings of food. Is that correct? It's, it's, I say that again, I'm sorry. So I understand that you put a little kitchen in the back. You do some cooking yeah, and preparation. It, it's, it's, it's a, and I'm it's, sorry, and just one more question. And you serve individual servings of the food. Is that correct? People can order individual servings of the food? We, yes, but it's to go. It's not for serving right. here. And you're saying yeah. you don't need a health department license to do that? I got it. Well, we do. No, no, I didn't say that. We, oh. we have the health department license. Oh, okay, so that's what I was reading. So that makes you a food service establishment, okay. even okay. if you don't have tables. That's what I was trying to read. Okay. You the I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Yes, you, so- The, the given, video is breaking up and down a little bit. Oh, yes, sorry. Great. So given that you are a food service establishment, right. by definition, then there are parking requirements. Gotcha. And if, when the first mini mart was opened on this site, however many years ago, it didn't need parking, then you're fine. If however, it did need parking, but it opened anyway without parking, then you would need to come back for a variance to allow you to continue without parking. I have to say just, it's not whether it was a mini mart of total retail, operation. It's whether or not it was some sort of a deli serving fresh foods, I think, to make it a, because it was a, just a mini mark. I don't know that it would need a health department license. No, she, she, she had sales. prior Bertha um, mm -hmm. mini mark. She had a deli back here. Okay. So, so and, and I believe good. she would have probably had to have a health permit to sure. make sandwiches and things like that. All we did with the special permit was add a grill to cook, you know, uh, make a bacon, egg, and cheese in the morning, or you know whatever you wanted. Um, but she did have a full deli back here prior to us. Thanks. So going back to so that's what we would need to do. So um, <clears throat> anybody else from the board has anything they want to ask before we open? I open it to the public. No. Okay. Is there any member of the public who wishes to speak on this application? I do not see anyone who's indicating that they wish to speak. Okay, so then we will adjourn the public hearing till the next meeting. Between now and the next meeting, um, the village, Amber, will look into the question of whether or when the food service establishment first opened on this site and whether, when it first opened on this site, whether parking was required at that time or not, whether it got a variance or not. And then we'll know the answer to for the next meeting. If we determine um, that, in, if they determine that in fact a par that parking was required but wasn't provided because a prior owner just did it without, you know, bothering to get to do it as they should have, then you'll need to apply for an area variance, and Amber will help you with that and explain what that means. But for your purposes right now, you can still continue to operate at Thank the moment. Thank you very much. And at that point, if, if an area variance is necessary, then we would deal with the renewal at the same time that we're dealing with the area variance. Okay. So I guess Amber will be our, my contact. And... Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So this uh, hearing is adjourned. Um, the next application is 1040. Robin, yeah. Robin, yeah. Before we open the public hearing of the next application, can we have a procedural discussion on the next application? 
Sure. What would you like to discuss? Well, I know there's there's two parts. There is an interpretation and there's the spe special permit decision before us. And I would like to make sure that we don't lump them together. So, and it seems to make sense to me to do the interpretation first, because that would have to say something about the model that then we're looking at for when we grant the special permit, whether it's not, it's going to have the outdoor window. And it's also just the standards are different for considering the interpretation regarding the outdoor counter um, is, is different than the, what we apply to consider for the special permit. So I would appreciate it if we could have arguments for the, from the applicant regarding the interpretation first, and then move on to the special permit consideration. We absolutely need to make a decision on the interpretation first, and then we have to decide if we, if we decide that they need, uh, as part of that determination, yes, includes the special permit necessarily because the question then would be, if the board determines that they need a variance and the applicant doesn't want to apply, the applicant could give up the window and just not have right. the window at all. So absolutely. Yes. So yes, no, absolutely. You are right. We do need to discuss, but it's listed as one. So we will take up one item first and have the applicant discuss one. Right. If we could just open direct that the one to the public. If we could direct the applicant. We'll open that one to the public before we move on to the next and either take a tent and have discussion, I think. Yes, I think that's right. Okay. Before we begin, um, can I just get, I guess, from Charlie, um, an interpretation of whether I need to recuse myself or not, because I got the notice that I'm within 400 feet of uh, 1043. Um, I'm not personally feeling like I'm so close to it, but um, you know, I just wanna, you know, cross my T's and dot my I's and to whether I need to recuse myself or not. Sure. So, um, you know, and, and forgive me for my, my lack of knowledge of the entire code at this point. We were just retained yesterday officially. Um, but um, so does the village, and I have not seen this, have any uh, recusal regulations where you do have to recuse yourself if you're within a certain distance? There's no specific distance. Okay then um, you don't have to recuse yourself. Um, it's, it's your choice and your choice only. You don't have to relate it to distance. It would only be if you had some sort of financial interest um, or connection to the applicant. Okay, then I don't need to recuse myself. Okay, so, um, so the next item on the agenda is 1043 West Boston Post Road, which is an application for an interpretation and then um, an application for a special permit for a chopped food service establishment. Um, is, yes, Mr. Spatz is here. Uh, do you wanna present your application please? For, so as Meg stated, said, please just discuss the interpretation now and explain your interpretation and why you think you are not you don't need an interpretation and or why you think you're vested and or whatever it is that you think. What do you mean, and sure. I guess those are two separate, those are two separate issues which you didn't really distinguish. But the first question is, do you need, I mean, the inter so there's two pieces of the interpretation. One, is it a drive in counter or there was a third term in the code or other, is it a drive-in? Sorry, I'm looking for the code language. Or is it an outdoor counter? Outdoor counter is separate from anything about drive-in. Well, wait, wait, there's three separate terms in here. Drive up, car service. Outdoor counter, drive-in, or curbside. Sorry. Right, so those are the five different terms. Sure. So, sure. Hang on sure. one second, H hang on one second. Um, so the first question is, explaining why you think you are not one of those. And, and if it's dependent solely on being vested because the bank had a dry something lane, then explain that. Um, or so go ahead, they may not be the same issue because you might not be one and therefore it doesn't matter if you're vested and you might, you only need an interpretation if you only need to talk about the vesting if the board determines that this is a 
counter outdoor something or something else because if the board determines that it isn't then there's nothing to to worry about so um, just treat them both differently so remember that there are two different issues good evening Go chair, members of the zoning board of appeals before i begin happy new year to everybody it's great to see everyone uh mr gottlieb welcome aboard the, the ss village of mamaronic uh, and Amber, again, uh, <laughs> congratulations on your elevation as village planner. That's wonderful. Uh, Chair and, 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 and Ms. Nowak, I'm, I'm going to ask, Nowak, I'm going to ask that uh, the various members on my team be elevated to presentation uh, because during the course of this very unique uh, application, I would like to have them readily available in the event they need to speak. So if I could, um, and I'll introduce them one by one as Amber's elevating them to present uh, pre as a presenter. We have Nick Marsh, who is CEO of uh, CHOP, Colin McCabe, who is co-founder, Tom Keller, who's COO, Dennis Lee, who's vice president of development, Amanda Ehrlich, who's design manager, Justin Gould, who is senior manager of construction, Brian Dempsey, who's our traffic engineer, Ralph Perrigan, uh, civil engineer, and Kristen Wilson, who's my co-counsel uh, with regards to this application. So um, thank you very much for elevating them. And we are very pleased to be here on this application this evening because it's a very unique application, hence why we're seeking the interpretation. And um, Obviously, if I'm presenting uh, chair, it probably means I'm either bringing food or a fitness place. One always goes hand in hand with my applications for some reason. But uh, for this evening, the, as reflected, the applicant does seek a special permit and zoning interpretation to operate a fast casual dining establishment. Uh, one yeah, we not munge both things together. It's fine if you're just stating the case. We would like to hear the arguments regarding the interpretation first. Uh, Ms. Yergin, you're going to hear both, I assure you, and I'm going to preface. I'm, I'm sorry, the chair asked you to define. To right, and I'm going to hit the zoning the interpretation. interpretation. Exactly. I have because, to the background. The, we don't need the background of CHOP to understand, to make an interpretation of the code. No it's very specific. The background of the property, Ms. Yergin, not, not of CHOP. They will have the opportunity later to speak about the historical context of CHOP and talking about why this is a very unique something that the village has never seen before or heard before. So I'm-, I'm A drive-through, a drive we're talking about whether or not it's cars not are gonna drive by and pick up food right now. That's that not, not that- drive That's what I, if you let me start, I'll be more than happy to get into it and why it's not a drive-through. Go ahead, Mr. Spatz. Thank you, Chair. So again, we're looking to open and operate a fast casual dining establishment at 1043 West Boston Post Road pursuant to section 34250 of the village code. As part of this application, we will plan on operating a fast casual dining experience, again, emphasizing high quality product and a variety of health, uh, healthy fresh choices of food items. Now, this would obviously be in an, in an atmosphere that's bright and convenient, but also given the precautions necessary for the global pandemic, it's gonna change the way that things are done interior, in the interior and exterior. Specifically, the proposed use is in a C1 zone. Uh, and we believe that the use would be in harmony with the general health and safety and welfare of the surrounding area. Just so you have an understanding of the area in relation to our interpretation, what's in the immediate proximity, you have Equinox Fitness, the Mamaronic Motel, Mamaronic High School, Bank of America with a drive-through, a traditional drive-through, an auto body shop, a nail salon, dry cleaners, and a pizza deli establishment. It should be noted that on this particular side of the West, West Boston Post Road, there's been tremendous challenges in the past maintaining long-standing food establishments with the exception of a pizza deli and McDonald's, again, with a traditional drive-through. The applicant has an ideal location based upon ample parking on site, accessibility by foot, bicycle, and the progressive contacts contact list means for patrons to receive, uh, receive the order. The premises was previously a Midland Bank and an HSBC Bank, which utilized a drive-through, a traditional drive-through banking for its banking purposes. Absolutely, no known special permit or variance was located when I foiled the documents on this particular property. The plan does reflect 32 seats with 12 uh, in interior with 12 employees, but we can get to the hours and 
the dynamics of when they'll be open and closed and deliveries later on. Here's where we talk about how this is such an interesting and unique approach. In addition to the patrons eating in and to assure a contactless and pickup dining options, guests will order from the applicant's proprietary platform and they will be given the option to collect their orders from the interior or from the exterior pickup. Now let's talk about the four methods of dining in or dining out so you can understand why this is not a drive-through or your traditional definition of outdoor counter, drive-in or curb service. Specifically A, we can talk about the interior pickup. Obviously the patrons will select an interior pickup online and will be uh, required to park on site and walk into the store to collect their order from a dedicated shelf inside the establishment. Let's talk about the exterior pickup. The applicant plans to operate an improved model of curbside service and a modern take on the drive-through concept, which is a national trend given the great concerns for patrons and employees' safety and health as of late. Specifically, guests would select and pay for their food online and would be instructed to pick up their order at a specific time frame at the establishment. CHOP will actually text that patron when the order is ready. So rather than using the curb, I'm going to use quote curbside pickup along Boston Post Road, which has been widely used by many restaurants and villages in this community since the onset of COVID-19, patrons will remain in their car and drive by the window during their assigned time provided. This is not a drive through as envisioned by section 34245 of the village code. And that one, there is no menu board or intercom equipment to order from. Two, an order is not placed at the establishment. Three, there's absolutely no payment of order at the window. Each transaction would take less than 30 seconds assur assuring a seamless contactless and safe transaction. Obviously there's an option for delivery, which I can come back into because that's not applicable to the interpretation. And also there'll be an option for inside dining, which is not applicable to our uh, interpretation. But based upon the foregoing, the applicant is seeking an interpretation of section 342 of 45. Specifically, there are numerous drive-through facilities in the C1 district, including CVS, Bank of America, Webster Bank, McDonald's, and our uh, property, a former HSBC branch, None no which required a variance or to my knowledge, special permits. The literal reading, the literal reading and interpretation of section 345, 342-45 prohibits wide use contact, contactless pickups from windows of existing establishments and or curbside pickups. But these are now widely used due to COVID-19 uh, pandemic. The legislative intent of section 342-45 most certainly did not envision a time period that would cut occupancy on-site dining by 75% and require curbside service to comply with executive mandates by our governor and to assure the safety of patrons and employees alike. Clearly curbside operations would now be consistent with the principal use of a food establishment and a vital option for the survival of the business. Now, the concept of a drive-in, I'm gonna quote drive-in as made reference to in article seven Section 342.45 is completely, utterly outdated and is far removed from this application. Specifically, again, the patron would not be required to park in their vehicles and wait for staff to take or provide them their order. The use of the seamless and efficient means to receive an order would enhance the safety and well being of patrons and employees alike. Moreover, as the chair made reference to, drive up car service or drive through as made reference to in this article, are best defined in the traditional sense where a meal is ordered upon a customer arriving on site at an establishment, waiting for their order to be prepared and paying for that very order at the pickup. The applicant plan plans to incorporate a seamless and again, a contactless process where the meal is pre-ordered and paid before arriving at the establishment. None of the transactions occur when the individual is in their vehicle, queued to get their uh, order. Once on site, the order is provided to the customer immediately, which would take no more than 30 seconds. Uh, we can obviously discuss the Provident Design Engineering Study with the traffic study. 
uh, and also the fact that even this uh, additional and innovative use would not create traditional noise fumes vibrations. But again, we could uh, address that when the, the board is ready. Department. Okay, I have a couple questions on your interpretation. Two things. Why is this not counter service? There is a counter and they're giving it out. And why is this not drive up service? Because drive up service is prohibited in the definition of food service establishment and counter services is one of the-, the, the I think the, it's outdoor counter. Outdoor no, counter. Is it outdoor counter, outdoor counter, outdoor counter, whatever the, I don't have three. I have, I have the food definition three. of food service establishment open. And why is this not an outdoor, um, uh, no, uh, where is it? Sorry, I want to get the- um, Sorry. Outdoor counter, right? Why is this not an outdoor counter or drive up service? Not outdoor counter, drive in, or curb service as the final. I'm not asking for that. I'm asking why it's not drive up service. The definition of food service establishment says no drive up or car service shall be permitted. Absolute prohibition. This seems to me like a drive up service. You drive up get your food and leave with it. That's drive up service. I don't know exactly, but we'll have to get that as part of our interpretation. But I'm asking you why you think it isn't drive up service or outdoor counter service. Two because different when, places those terms are used. Sure. When you apply the definition through case law that has been established in New York State for other applications, by applicants and other communities, and you look up the definition of that, we don't fit within that. There is no ordering board. There is no menu board. There is no waiting for the food to be prepared. There's no payment. There's no exchange of services on site. The traditional definitions, if you look it up uh, through whatever resources and as established by case law, through other um, judicial precedents and communities, they all involve several things in common. One, arriving on the location, ordering off a board, waiting for the meal to be prepared, and the exchange of consideration, money payment. In this situation, there is no consideration exchange, the meal is not prepared, and it's not ordered on site. So there's a very clean, clear distinction between what was envisioned what has traditionally been defined as the terms made reference to uh, by your chair. And that's what's so important. And that's why their proprietary uh, uh, web is so unique because you're able to achieve all this without having to do so on site. Uh, but that didn't answer the question of, that might be why it's not drive through or drive in, but why isn't it drive up, right? There's nothing that says, I mean, I don't know. And why isn't it outdoor counter. Why isn't this an outdoor counter? Again, I'm going to defer to the case law and the traditional definitions. When you look at the definitions that have been utilized by the courts and by other boards and committees, land use boards and committees, our own, our own code doesn't define that, uh, Chair. We don't define exactly what's curb, what is window, what is defined as such. Uh, any type of, we, we never in this community have ever, to my knowledge, had a concept that is uh, being uh, uh, sought by the applicant, never. Doesn't, I don't care if it's Ralph Ice, I don't care if it's another fast food. I, it, we have never had this in this community. It, it sets aside and it creates a new interpretation. We don't have it. Our, our code doesn't define it. And as we all know, and it's in, in a situation when the code is vague or ambiguous, it goes to the benefit of the applicant. Um, uh, just two things. Yes, but this is an interpretation, so that's a different question. And second, just as a just for so everybody knows, I asked um, the village to look into the McDonald's. The McDonald's is a non pre-existing non. Right. Their yeah. drive-through is a pre-existing non-conforming uh, drive-through. Right. So no. they have a right to be there. They didn't get a variance. They have it not. So just to let the board members know. Okay. Um, anybody else from the board have any questions for Mr. Spatz? I, 
Um, I would say, Mr. Spatz, before, I'm sorry, Meg, I didn't I look like you were about to start. Um, if you have case law that you think is applicable to this, it would be great if you would submit that case law. As you know, we have lots of, of lawyers on this board um, and you know we would like to see that case law. So that will help us. My co-counsel and I would be happy to do so. My hope was to actually avoid having to even get into case law. I mean, it, I, I believe that if you hear the application and as we go further along that my client can describe the process, you will see how this can be distinguished from fast food. In fact, I don't want to use the word fast food or drive through in our application because that's, that's absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, so I was hoping to, I mean, we'll be more than happy to entertain that chair and we'll certainly fulfill our due diligence. But I'm going to say this, in the years I've been doing this, this group of individuals have come together with this application. I we're very excited about this. We're very excited to bring this innovative concept to the village of Mamaroneck. You know, our village code is antiquated. And I know that back, Greg Cutler back in 2018 was pushing hard to try to get the uh, code modified and updated. I'm not certain where that went, where that ended up, but we lack that. But based upon the fact that we lack that, obviously my client shouldn't be prejudiced by that. The, nothing in our code would even remotely come near defining what my client uh, plans to do. Um, okay, well, well, we'll leave the question of whether we need um, or would like a legal, you know, some legal uh, citations and, and, you know, argument until we're done with, see what other board members would like. Oh. So Meg, I think you had a question or starting had some questions. Yeah, well, I would just like to make a comment about outdoor counter. You're saying that you're paying virtually rather than paying when you get to the window, but there's still a transaction that you pay for it virtually. And when you drive up, I would think there's some way that you identify yourself to say, this is the order, the one that I did earlier online and I paid for. There has to be some way that you're indicating who you are and then you are getting the, in exchange, you are delivered the order that you are given. Meg, the so legal definition of consideration is not identifying yourself. A consideration is paying money, exchange of money or some type of goods and services. This is not- Right, the, the consideration was done th virtually through a credit card or online, but consideration was passed. So you're saying it's not physically passed as a dollar or am I done handing my credit no. card? Right, but consideration did pass. It was a business transaction. Meg, I could have done it in California. I could have done it. I'm sorry. I'll just, I'm just giving you my comment. I, you know, you can argue after I'm, I'm done, perhaps. But um, so I don't agree. It's a business transaction. Just because it's virtual doesn't mean that it's any different. Um, it is an outdoor counter. Um, this board um, had to rule on Ralph's which had an outdoor counter and um, found that the outdoor counter that you walked up to, yes, I, I'm sure, I don't know that they had pre-ordering there, but we, this board did find that that was not a permitted use, that outdoor counter. So regardless of whether cars come up to it or not, an outdoor counter to um, get your materials, is, to get what you ordered is, is not um, permitted. Um, the fact, it, the only drive, through kind of place that we have for food establishments is McDonald's. All of the other businesses that you're citing are actually retail uses, so that is a different use. And just the fact that they exist, um, I don't think that those, those windows, some of those banks might have preceded when the code changed and are, are grandfathered in. Um, I, I have a feeling that many of the other banks, I don't see anything in the code that allows them to do business transactions outside. So simply because something has popped up in the village and has never, violations have not been issued, does not mean that we change the code as a result because it hasn't been, um, um, the violations haven't been cited. I'd also like to bring your attention to 342-30C, which talks about what uses can be uh, allowed outdoors. And it's, um, whether it's a principal or accessory, um, parking of permitted used cars and outdoor restaurant services. And the permitted outdoor restaurant services that are described in our code are on a patio or terrace. And one that's not described, but which I would consider is a permitted use is when you have a sidewalk cafe. Um, that's another permitted use, but those would be the only outdoor restaurant services. Otherwise, all, all, all um, it doesn't talk about whether it's exchange of, of 
a consideration or anything. All other operations must be carried on in fully enclosed businesses. When I read this, this is why I don't think that the banks having windows or ATMs are legal either. These are all good uh, thoughts that perhaps the village would like to change how it allows people to pick up orders, um, but that's beyond our purview. We cannot change the code. As you cited, uh, our former planner, Greg Cutler, might have been suggesting some things, and as you said, the code was not changed. We cannot change the code. We cannot say, oh, because of C-19, you are now allowed to have curbside service or pickup service or drive up service um, because we feel that the environment has changed that's beyond our authority. We do not change the law. Um, I, I think that if people are getting curbside service, I understand a lot of things are changing and people are not getting violations for code violations right now because due to the pandemic. I have empathy for them. I think we have to make an adjustments. That does not mean that it's actually code compliant. And what we're talking about here is not a temporary fix of offering curb service that you never would offer when you don't have the pandemic. We're talking about setting up the actual uh, physical structure of the building for the window. You're going to design your building to have the window um, and the drive-through area. Um, I know it's already established for the bank, but you're gonna work around that. Um, so we're not talking about a temporary fix that perhaps the village is, is just accommodating and even though it is not allowed in the code. So I would not compare the fact that some restaurants are having offering and some stores are offering curbside service in this emergency time. Um, I don't think it's a permitted use. I have empathy. I can understand why the village might allow it, but it's not. But if we allow this, if we interpret this to say, yes, you are allowed to drive up your car and pick up food from a window that you ordered and paid for in some manner, and you're, we would be changing the code. We would be saying that not just your restaurant, but other restaurants could have drive up outdoor counters or walk up outdoor counters. Um, so just because you're, you're, I think it's just trying to be clever that you're not gonna put a sandwich board outside and you're gonna make people order things in advance. Um, you're gonna speed it up. Um, but to me, it's still a business transaction. Meg, uh, if I can, you, 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 you said- oh, Wait, wait, before you go, I'm not sure that business transaction is relevant to this. It says counter. It doesn't say a counter yeah. for consideration. It just says outdoor counter, and it just says drive up. It doesn't say business transaction. So I think discussion about the business nature and whether the transaction was done virtually ahead of time or not is not relevant. Doesn't matter where the transaction, where the consideration was paid. It was paid separately, no question about it. It is not being paid on site. It is being paid somewhere else. It's been being paid in the cloud. Not a question. Is there still a counter? Is somebody driving up to get something? I think that's the question that, that at the bottom end, that's what the question is. Is there a yep. counter? is do you drive up and or do you drive up to get it? Yeah, even if you're giving away free samples, you Chair, can't if, do if that I could, outside at an outdoor counter. You have to do it in a fully enclosed business. Only time that you could serve it would be on a, a patio or a terrace. Well, no, you could, you, um, if it's not a, it says, except outdoor restaurant services. It doesn't say what outdoor restaurant services are. Therefore, if we determine that this is not a counter, which is a counter, any of those things, again, or a, if we determine that this is not any of the five terms that are specifically prohibited in food service establishments, then everything like else has to be completely enclosed. 342-45, it says no food disturbance shall provide an outdoor counter drive-in or curb service, but it may provide service at tables on a torch, porch or terrace. So when I'm saying, when I flip to 42-30C okay. and it talks about outdoor restaurant services, that's what it's referring to. It's in the same paragraph, it says no outdoor counter. It says you can serve at a patio or terrace. So I am saying that that is what is okay. what it, that paragraph C is referring to. Interestingly okay. enough, Meg, I'm glad you actually raised 342-30-C. Let's take a look at that. In that, the literal reading of section 340-30C would prevent gasoline stations in the C1 zone 
because it does say that shall be carried on in a quote fully enclosed building yet in the c1 there are many gas stations that aren't fully enclosed in a building no that's they a problem with our food it looks like that does not but, justify but, you having an outdoor no, counter if i may meg this is a if you're taking a literal interpretation of 342-30c if you take a literal interpretation of the applicant's um, presentation this evening, there is no, this is not, cannot be compared to your experience that you had down at Rouse. That's not fair to project that experience upon my client. I am not comparing an experience. I'm talking about the, excuse me, all fairness. Mr. Spatz, Mr. Spatz, Mr. Spatz, I was not talking about anybody's experience. I was talking about the decision of the ZBA which found that when that the outdoor counter was not a permitted use and and so revoked the but CFO. there was absolutely no comparison. You're com you're making a comparison. You can't. There's absolutely nothing. You don't walk up. There's not a board. You don't order on site. There's you cannot compare the two. And unfortunately, because of what transpired several some time ago, you, you can't project it. And that's not right to then project. Nobody's project. We're talking specifically about the decision that the board said no outdoor counter, regardless of the experience, that no outdoor counter. We cannot be arbitrary and capricious and then turn around and say, oh, you can have an outdoor counter, but Ralph's could. Okay. Does any, um, Mr. Spatz, does there anything else you want to say before I go to the other board members? No, I'd like to hear what other board members have to okay. say. And I, I don't know, I think Ralph, Perga, not Ralph, but Ralph, who is on our team. Ralph, you were raising your hand. Did you want to contribute to the whole dynamics? You're on mute, yeah. No, I just wasn't in the video. Okay, I it. wasn't online, and so I just raised my hand to get into the- uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I just want to make sure, and I also like want to make sure that my co-counsel doesn't, uh, Ms. Wilson doesn't want to add anything as well. No, I would just, um, and you mentioned it, Andy, briefly that, and it was actually cited in one of actually this board's seminal cases, the Mamaroneck Beach and Yacht Club, which I think any land use attorney is well aware of, that when there is ambiguity, whether it's in an interpretation or, or an actual area variance, use variance, whatever the, the application might be, the ambiguity does fall to, in favor of, of the applicant. And um, it, that decision was originally made in a case uh, by the Court of Appeals in the city of Rye many decades ago, but your, your own board was involved in that type of exact matter, um, different facts, but the, the second department in, um, I think that was a 2008 case uh, with the, the Mamaroneck Beach and Yacht Club, they squarely fell on the side that when there is ambiguity, like this, when the the code does live and breathe, um, and it is it it doesn't always apply in the same context as when it was originally written. When there is ambiguity and you couldn't think of every particular situation, it does default, if you will, in favor of the property owner. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I just point out that that assumes that there's ambiguity. Um, I'm not saying there is, I'm not saying there isn't, but in order for that provision to apply, it assumes ambiguity. Um, okay, and since you can make an interpretation, obviously there is some flexibility in what that means to be ambiguous. And this board has made interpretations, um, finding that things were not permitted uses or something. So uh, Greta or Abby, do you have anything, any questions do you have for the applicant on this issue? Or I would just say I don't think advances in technology necessarily then create make a statute ambiguous. Um, I absolutely agree with Robin. If you're going to cite case law, I want to see it. I want to see the actual case. We have four lawyers on the board, and we have Meg who could be a lawyer. So we want to see um, the case law ourselves, and if the if indeed you believe it's outdated, that our regulations are, are, are outdated, that's not our purview. We can't deal without, you know, it's, you have to go to the Board of Trustees if you have an issue with outdated regulations. So that's what. That's Chair, all. I think I, I had a lot of trouble hearing uh, Greta, I, but I, 
Sorry. I, I... Okay, so uh, do you want me to give everybody else? Um, very briefly, technology, advances in technology, in my mind, doesn't render our code ambiguous. Uh, I agree with what Robin said. We have to look at the case law um, and decide for ourselves. And I want to see the actual case as opposed to a summary of the case, but if you can give me relevant pages, that would be helpful. And um, I forget my other point. Oh, my other point is, if you believe the, that the code is outdated, you have to go to the Board of Trustees. We can't help you with that. If I may, uh, Ms. Henry, it was not that it's antiquated, it's that the definitions that are used in the code do not reflect our application. They, they just don't. I mean, unfortunately, for what I mean, listen, when you're talking about drive curb service, you're talking about people that come out on a roller skate and you dine in the, in the parking lot. This is not what we're uh, obviously uh, uh, suggesting. Uh, so all definitions, again, historically, and when you look up the, the, the meaning, it's not a matter of technology. It's a matter of, unfortunately, the definitions as utilized do not match what the applicant's intended use is. And based upon that, that's why we're asking for the interpretation because our code doesn't cover the uh, use. There is ambiguity there. Uh, Abby, do you have anything? I, I mean, I agree with the rest of the board. Um, I really do. I, yeah, I think everyone's kind of said everything already. I also think, yes, the pandemic has certainly changed our landscape for the here and now, but that's, you know, a, a temporary, I mean, hopefully thing that is not something we should be changing the law over right now. So that's, um, you know, yeah. I, mean, okay. I, can, I, I respect that. And I, again, I want to emphasize, we're not asking to change the law. We're not asking you to observe the code. What we're saying is that the code does not reflect our intended use. So based upon that, we're seeking an interpretation. There, there is nothing, there is no language in our code or definition that reflects what their intended use is. Nobody could have foreseen that there'd be a time when you didn't need a ordering board, you don't need an intercom, you don't need that wait to have something prepared on site. I, and, and again, you know, listen, we all call this community our backyard, okay? And nobody wants to have a sort of precedence of having a fast food or a drive through in, in a plethora of applications. But I will say this, as, as a member of this community and as someone who speaks to a lot of people in our community, and I've shared these this concept with a lot of individuals in Orienta who would be most impacted in that particular area by any type of application like this at this location, um, doesn't seem that there's a lot of, oh my God, this guy's gonna come in. And I'm, I'm hoping that we don't have this knee jerk reaction because you see this drive through, which it's not, just a knee jerk reaction saying, no, we, we can't have it, we can't change the go. We're not asking to change the law. We're not, any, we're asking for a, obviously a opportunity for you to interpret and look at the code as is versus what my applicant proposes. And I'd be hard pressed to find anybody in our community that would say, you know what? No, we don't want this because, you know, you go to McDonald's that's and yeah, right now. Part of that's not the point. I, I'm in the same community, right? I live in Oriental. I, so I love it. it. I love it, what but what it's not like. Andrew, this is an interpretation. It's not about community. Or no. the community. Mr. Spatz, as you well know, the issue here isn't whether or not everyone in the community would like a nice salad place with fresh salads um, to be operating on Boston Podro. That goes to a question of the special permit, right? Is it appropriate for this location? All those arguments are good, and you can make them when you, you know, when uh, you come for the special permit, when we're hearing the special permit. But the issue of interpretation, it doesn't matter if every single person in the community signed a petition that said, we want shopped to be located here. As you know, it doesn't matter if everyone in the community did that. If we make an interpret, it's an interpretation. So the board could find, regardless of a petition from every single, all 19,000 people who live in the village of Mamaroneck, um, I think that's the number Just from no. all of those people to sign something that said we want chopped 
if we, the board interprets this to require, to mean that you can't do it, then you can't do it. And you know that, Mr. Spatz, let's yeah, not, you, let's not, let's not, you know that. So, um, yeah, but I, but I also know that 19,000 people, when they look at our code, if you ask them what it meant, they would say, no, that doesn't apply. Not that, that, so that the, the way that the code is actually written, it, it's antiquated, it's outdated. Just your it the gist of your argument is because I can sit in my car and order online and pay there and then drive around and get it, that somehow this definition doesn't apply anymore. So that any restaurant then could just give direction, okay, sit in your car and pre-order and pay on virtually, which is faster and faster for everybody to do. We might have rewards cards, we might have points and it's gonna go faster and faster. And you do that and then you drive around and pick it up. You, you Because we have this virtual ability now, you're saying that that was not defined in the code. It's still the operation. It's an operation to come around and pick up your order from a outdoor window. And that clearly says, it does not say, oh, if you pay from a credit card in advance, then it's okay. That doesn't make any sense. But Ms. Jurgen, you're missing certain elements of that. I'm sorry, I, I beg to differ. You're missing certain elements. The definition at, that the code possesses at this anticipates you stop, you order, they make it, you pay. That okay. is okay. not Okay, you know what? There's no point in arguing. You're, um, Mr. Spatz, you're saying that the definition doesn't mean this. I think we need the case law to see that. Um, yes, uh, Charlie, you had a... Uh, comment you wanted to say something about this yeah i just wanted to it sounds like the board would like some more information and, and probably more in a, a a written argument form would be helpful um you know with the case law and so forth a few things that um you also might consider providing to the board that you mentioned here tonight that i didn't see in the application was um some of the precedents that was drive through uh that you had mentioned one was the mcdonald's so the McDonald's, that, Charlie, uh, as I said already, the McDonald's is a grandfathered use and therefore it really isn't relevant to. No, that's right. Yeah. So anything, you know, the other things that you mentioned, how are those permitted? How would we know those all aren't pre-existing non-conforming uses? Charles, that's a great question, but unfortunately now because of certain individuals in this community that love spoiling, there's a really bad big backlog of that. So I'd be more than happy to foil those documents from the specific lots. But the good news is in the past, um, the village has better access than anybody in terms of being able to readily see whether or not uh, the special use or variances were required. But I'll be more than happy. Sure. Just, just yeah. let me finish. You know, and I, I appreciate your advocacy, but just let me finish. Um, so the precedents would be interesting. You know, the village is low on on resources, so maybe we can look into that. Um, but I think it would probably be who of you to also look into that. You also made reference to legislative history of these various provisions. Um, you know, I, I look just generally at the code. These sections have been amended over and over and over again. I don't know if you have documentation of the legislative history, village trustees minutes, um, the local laws that were enacted. But you know, if you point to those, uh, it'd be nice to have those in the record to review as well. Um, the other thing would be. You mentioned ordinary definitions of drive-throughs. You said a traditional drive-through. If you have any documentation to show um, that what you're saying is a traditional drive-through, of course, we've all been through drive-throughs. Um, typically, cases cite to Webster Dictionary issues. Um, so a little bit more information to back up some of the assertions that were made, I think would be helpful for the record. Uh, let me be clear. Let me explain what the board had asked for, uh, which is we want the case law. And we want the cases, as Greta says, you know, not just a brief or, an, or a memo saying, in the case of X V Y, the you know the third uh, district said X. We want if you're going to say in the case of X V Y, we want a copy of the case of X V Y. Um, so if you're going to do a memo, we would want the uh, cases attached, um, so that we do not have to do the research, you know, that's what we want the cases attached. So if you would please um, do that. And I think we're gonna, we're not gonna be able to make a decision tonight, uh, but before we go any further, let me see if there's anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this application or anybody yeah, else on, from the sure. applicant who wishes to speak. Did you have sure, something else? Move on, I just have a question for council. 
Um, specifically with the, with the legislative history, are you just making reference to section 342 of the actual <laughs> restaurant? Because, I mean, again, you know, to foil something in this community is, is another endeavor in itself. And I would love to be able to get that back to you as quickly as possible. But there have been times when I get a, a letter back saying, we'll get back to you in a couple of weeks because of obviously reduced hours, uh, COVID, blah, 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 and other individuals in this community that love foiling. Um, but with that being said, I would love to be able to get, I want to make sure that the legislative history you're looking for is exactly on point of what code. Okay, is. let me just make clear to Mr. Gottlieb, legislative history doesn't exist in the village for the most Thank part. You. We never are able to find out anything about why provisions were adopted. There are provisions that are adopted. There's no the minute, there's no record, there's no minutes. So um, just to let you know, we do not rely on legislative history because it doesn't exist. In okay, the, I, I, the only reason I said it was because he, uh, Mr. Spatz was relying on, on some of his arguments. So if it does exist, we should probably see it. I, I think that's fa fair, fair. Um, if there's something out there, you should I, I, provide I, I, it. Chair, I'll be not, happy to do but that. we all recognize that there might not be anything. So, thank you, you know, Chair. Just, and I don't think Mr. Gottlieb realizes that, uh, you know, provisions in the code, you can't get black lined copies of what it read before it was a changed and there aren't real good. That's records. something we all can agree on. Uh, everybody on the day is tonight. Everybody can agree on that. So, so you, yes, might, I, you know, you might look on the Department of State website. Sometimes local laws are typically good available. Luck. Yeah, this is the this is the village of Amerinik is not um, one of the places that has good records. So anyway, um, we got a lot of other good qualities. We have a lot of good things, uh, Charles, but that's may not be one of them. Well, I recall from my days of practicing in Westchester the difficulties of FOIL requests and so forth. Okay, is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on this application? Amber, anyone? No one has indicated that they are looking to speak. Now that's historical. Um, Chair, would it be okay before we conclude? I mean, again, we have a lot of individuals and I don't, you won't necessarily need to hear from everyone, but would, would the chair allow at least some of the primary individuals would chop to, to speak or at least give three minutes just to give a little bit of, I mean, you're only hearing from me. I'd rather you hear it from the, the voice and the experience of the proprietors here. I mean, if, if that's acceptable to chair and members of the um, zoning board. I don't have a problem with having other members speak, with having other participants speak, as long as they understand that what we're hearing about today is the interpretation, not that's the fine. special permit. That's fine. Thank you. So I'm gonna throw it to the team. If there's anybody, again, you've heard the chair and members of the zoning board, uh, anybody that in particular would like to address either the concept of the pickup, uh, exterior pickup, or the platform, the, the technology that's involved in it, feel free to, to um, share your experience. And I, I, I do have to say that uh, one individual in particular is coming back to the village. One of the, the proprietors of CHOP grew up uh, in Mamaroneck and went to high school across the street. So uh, it's good to at least to have someone come back after uh, <laughs> rising great success. So Nick, Nicholas, that was you, no? That was me. <laughs> I'm going to quickly revise all of my comments to try to fit what the board is asking for uh, and make them as, as, as quick as possible. I am from Amerinik. Uh, I graduated from Amerinik High School in 1986. I understand that that is not relevant to the interpretation, but it is, it is important for everybody to know that I do come for this as a community member. My parents live in Orienta for the past 35 years. I, I am there. I'm there not as much as you are, but I'm there at least uh, three or four times a month for dinner. So um, doing what good is good salad. for the community. Not shot, good salad, I'm just kidding. <laughs> within the bounds of the rules is, I understand that that is uh, very important. Um, so, uh, and, uh, and, and yes, certainly if uh, either I do a bad job tonight or we do not run a good restaurant, I'll hear about it from my mother um, and no one at any age wants to uh, hear about it from their mother. So, um, Look, the, um, um, you know, a a Andrew described, I think, very well what, what we feel is important. We are doing something different. We were a company that, that, that was founded by Colin McCabe, who's on the phone, that, uh, you know, 20 years started out by doing something different, right? We were going to serve salads as entrees. And at the time, I think that was as crazy 
as trying to explain to you that there should be a different interpretation for drive through right? And we've always been sort of very comfortable trying to figure out how do we do things that serve customers in, in, in a new way, right? Uh, it is no longer a crazy idea that, that salad could be the main part of a meal. It certainly was when our company started. About seven years ago, what we became solely focused on, right, is that if you want people to eat good food, it has to be convenient. It has to compete in convenience. And, 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 but in the same way that we didn't want it, you know, that we thought about our food differently, we thought about what convenience was going to be differently. So we were one of the first companies to build an app where you could do online ordering, right? That, that, that obviously exploded in popular, popularity. And it was something that was really only for the big guys, right? We were lucky enough that we have multiple restaurants at this point, but we're still small. And, and, and we were doing something that, that, that really only the big guys were doing. After we did that, it got so popular, we found we needed to build our own software to re receive those orders. Where are those orders going to go, right? We, we, needed a, we needed a way to process them, schedule them, organize them so that the people in the restaurants could make them accurately. We, we built that, right? And then we, were in, we, then we got into this new land of where we were working with our customers, right? All of a sudden, we, we could communicate back. So now we could notify you when your salad was ready, right? We could actually send you a message and say, hey, we got your order. Don't worry about that. Then we could send you an order that said, uh, a, a message that says, we're making your order now. So maybe you want to start getting ready to come over here. And, and then we could send you a message that says, your, your, your food is ready. And I, and I do bring that up because I, I do think the, the way that this, it, 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 the, to, to suggest that this is just drive through with a transaction in the cloud it, it is not, um, I do not think is representative of the technology and the interaction um, that has been created between us and the guest, it is it's it's it is it's different, right? Um, what what at first that was just convenient. It seemed like oh this is neat, right? We can tell you when your salad is ready. It did become mission critical six months ago. All of a sudden, you couldn't let somebody in your restaurant to to before the food was ready. You're gonna you're gonna have all these people coming in looking through their bags trying to figure out where to pick up. That became a non-starter. So something that seemed like a little bit of a convenience at the time became critical to our operations. And then in working with landlords and in working with certainly a lot, a lot of different places where, where, where rules had not thought about things like this before, you know, we came up with, well, we could actually, you know, now that we're, now that we're texting back and forth, why even, why even get out of your car? Just send us a text and tell us when you're here and we'll bring the food out to, we'll, we'll, we'll bring the food out to your car. You don't even have to come in the restaurant. Now, again, I, like all the rest of you, I am desperately hopeful that the reason that these things are great is not because we need them for COVID for much longer. Hopefully this will, these will be things that are great because they've actually changed the way people can interact with a restaurant, right? It's, just, it, it's a different way they can interact and it's more convenient, right? And it's faster and it's, and it's, and it is quite, quite frankly, it's less of a burden on, 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 on communities where you have to, where we have to deal with, many of these same issues. How are people going to, how are, how's traffic going to work? How's queuing going to work? All the issues with we have other experts here to, to talk about today. So uh, what, what I would, um, you know, again, this is, this is as, 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 as close to offering it a, 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 a thoughtfulness about the interpretation. And I appreciate everyone indulging me here. Um, but what we were going to do is not, it is not a drive-through. It is not drive It is not what was, was envisioned by other restaurants in the past. It's taken a tremendous amount of work it's taken a tremendous amount of investment, and in a little bit of a weird twist of fate, I, you know, it is it is personal to me, right? Like I'm I'm excited about the fact that Mamaroneck, across from the place I went to high school, could be the first, you know, the first uh, um, and and best one uh, of of this, um, you know, the, you know a, a type of restaurant that we that we built. Um, so I, I appreciate everybody's listening. Um, I, 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 I really would like you to at least consider that this is something um, uh, different than what we've seen before and different than is, is defined. Um, and I'll turn it back over to the attorneys. Um, thanks very much. Chair and members of the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, listen, when CHOP first came to me with this concept, first of all, I was excited um, because, again, I'm so used to bringing in donuts and other stuff like that in the community. I figured it's about time that I bring something healthy. Um, but when I, they explained the concept to me, I'm like, you know, this is going to be an interesting approach because initially what came to my mind was, yeah, you're not going to get it. 
you're not in the it's not going to happen but as the team started explaining to me and i even spoke to uh, the former village planner our current village planner and 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 uh, to amber's benefit she goes well you know there are different ways you can look at this and i said you know i get it but i'm excited about this approach i mean and i'm excited about this innovative concept and i'm very receptive to everyone's concerns on here i'm whether whether historically or today i understand it but i also see the inefficiencies in, in our own code, you're not to blame, no one's here to blame, but I do believe that this would be an appropriate and ideal and right time to say, you know what, the interpretation, maybe the applicant's use is indicative and reflective of, of something that would be permitted without having to say, yeah, we're changing the law, which we're not seeking to do. Um, so I, I get the challenges here. And, and as I said, it's, it, this is our community too. So you don't want to start a precedent of, okay, well, now I want to do a window. I want to have a uh, drive through. And yes, that is a dangerous, dangerous precedent. But I do think a few things. One, with scrutiny that's applied by this board and it has been in the past, whether it's a short consideration time period, just to see, again, if it does indeed um, facilitate the way that Nick and the rest of the team explained. But I do ask and I humbly respect to really, once you do see some of the and again, I don't want to have to resort in, in, in to, to rely on case law, our own life experiences. What do we know? What do we have come to know, known, not in the years past, but now and, and tomorrow? Will this be conform and will this be indicative of what we want to see in our neighborhoods and in the community? So I'm just asking, you know, I'm, I'm taking a deep breath because a lot of times when we get all excited about an applications and, you know, we lose sight of really what, what's at stake, what can the future bring? So I am hoping that we do give, you know, thorough scrutiny of this. And, and my client needs to be held accountable in terms of what their promise is. They're promising you that this is nothing like what we've seen before. Well, let us show you. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Spatz, and thank, thank you, Mr. You. Marsh. Um, if and no one else has anything else to say, I think we'll just adjourn the hearing and we will expect to receive, um, you know, at least I'd say two weeks before the next meeting so we all have the board members have time to review well, whatever you well i have a problem i have a question before oh no, go, go ahead, ahead abby and then ahead. matt or somebody first okay so we got this akrf uh, traffic report and obviously there are a ton of traffic issues um around this given the location on the boston post road so i'm just kind of curious what the steps are with regard to is this also going to the traffic commission? How does this all work with them? Um, I know there's someone from AKRF on the line. So I just want to raise how does traffic fit into all of this in this application process? Um, and I guess the other kind of, yeah, so that, so I just went before we, we uh, you know, adjourn this for now, I wanted to raise that issue because we obviously got the memo. There's obviously been some work on this. It's obviously a big issue. So I just want to clarify, you know, what it is and what we're doing about it or not. Well, the traffic, oh, sorry. The traffic question goes to the special permit. Can we make the finding of the special permit as part of that? Um, I do know Elaine from AKRF was here tonight to talk about it, but if we're not going to be discussing the special permit tonight, I think it's more appropriate to leave that, sorry, Elaine, <laughs> for the next meeting so we can have a presentation of the special permit application by the applicant and with his, with his um, group, with his applicant team. And then as part of that application, we'll discuss the traffic study. Uh, and, but, but I do think, I, I have a question. Let me ask you, and this is a substantive question, Mr. Spatz, just to move things along more quickly for you. If, the board, and you don't have to have an answer to now because you may have discussed it with your team, but it would be helpful in terms of scheduling this. If the board decides that you are a one of the uses prohibited by the code, if that's what the board decides by its interpretation, um, is your applicant preparing to proceed with the necessary variance, which might be a use variance, or is the applicant just going to say, forget it, I'll just do the normal, you can, pre you can do all this ordering, but you have to drive the car up, park, get out, and walk into the store like, for example, 
in the village, Chipotle does. So um, I, we need an answer to that. And we'll need an answer to that, ideally if we could have it two weeks or sometime before the next meeting. Now you don't have to give us, you know, if, because that way, if you decide that, if you, if we decide that you need a variance, that you would just, that the applicant is just going to go forward with this anyway without that outdoor thing, um, without that outdoor piece. We're not going to call, I don't know what to call it, so I'm just calling the thing. Exterior, exterior pickup, exterior pickup. With, without that, um, that place, then <laughs> we will be prepared at the next meeting to have the special permit application. Chair, uh, it's a back to school. If, however, do. you are not going to be going forward, then we'd have to, we'd have to delay the whole thing in order to have the use, the, the appropriate variance application filed. So I think, sure, sure. again, as I said, you don't need to, I don't expect an answer now. You are going to need to discuss that with your team, but um, it would be great to know the answer before the next meeting well, so we know what we're doing. Chair, just so I understand, let me just take, let me sort of slice that question. And it's a very good question. And I want, I want to say a few things. I want to just take a step back and I want to thank the Zoning Board of Appeals, whether it was Chair or Amber, whomever, to take Brian Dempsey's report and forward on to AKRF because in the past, applications have been delayed because of trying to play catch up. So that was insightful, that was progressive, and I appreciate that having encountered delays like that in the past for my, um, for my applicants. So that, that was great, thank you. Secondly, um, we, I guess like going back to the movie Back to School, we can refer to that as a widget, the window as a widget. Um, but my question to you is if we decide to withdraw the interpretation and utilize just the in dining, for fast casual, we would pre we wouldn't have to re-notice because it's already been noticed once. I just want to make sure we're correct on this. So, for example, in two weeks, my client says, "You know what, Drew? Forget it. Let's just get it. You know, we, we got a timeline. We have a lease. Let's just get this thing done." I could notify Amber, who could CC obviously members of the board, that we're, we're withdrawing our interpretation request and going forward with just the special use permit. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. I see no reason for you to have to re-notice. The notice for today included the special permit, right. correct? Right. Right. Therefore, yes. we're just adjourning it like any other application that we adjourn. You don't have to re-notice when there's an now, adjournment. The difference is if we're going use variance, then obviously we would have to re-notice as a use variance. Correct. Uh, and, and, and quite frankly, and this is a dialogue, I, I don't have a problem having this with chair and members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. One of the concerns we had is, yeah, you could go use variance. And we know the burden for use is very hard and very challenging and it can be done, but it's you know very challenging. The, again, relying on the COVID saying, hey, you know, this is one of the only ways we can exist as an establishment because of the restrictions. The concern that we have is, okay, you can have the window, but once, you know, everyone's vaccinated and once Governor Cuomo, you know, sends the mandates, whether it's May or whenever, you know, so was, we're going to take an investment and do this exterior and then have to. So that was the internal dialogue that we we're having. I have no problem throwing it out to, I mean, you can kind of get a litmus test is if we went use, are you geared to say, or would you, and again, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Would this be something? Well, yeah, we'll do it possibly just during the COVID crises. And then once it's over, then we would want you to not, or perhaps if it worked really well and that wasn't a issue and traffic worked out and everything seemed seamless, would we be able to go and extend that? Uh, so it, it was a dialogue, Chair and I members can, of the Zoning Board of Appeals. This was a Robin, hard decision. Robin, I can answer, can let me can answer this can piece of it. If, if it's going to depend in part on what your argument is for hardship, if you go for use variance, if you go for a use variance that base, that's based on the COVID restriction, then since that's the only hardship you're presenting and we granted the use variance, it would only be for the term of the COVID restrictions. If you gave a use variance that was broader, um, then we would make no, I understand it that. Fair enough. Fair enough, Chair. Meg, did you have something? Yeah, well, I have a, a few things, but now I'm going to speak to that, and I would like counsel's advice. I believe that when we're looking at a use variance, it has to be for hardship that's particular to this property. So something like COVID that affects all restaurants would not be a, a viable argument, as, as I understand it. It would have to be something, it's not something that is the same for every other same use in the village. Is that correct? 
<clears throat> that is a correct understanding. It has to be a hardship that's unique um, to to the property. You know, we could certainly research the issue on on such a temporary uh, COVID type use variance. Um, you know, it may even be something, and I don't know if the applicant has done this, looked into, you know, the three executive orders that we get uh, every single day if there's right, something yeah. getting in there. Um, but yes, Meg, you are correct. Well, let me ask you a question. I, I'm not sure, I don't know that I agree with that um, because the code says, and village law says, you have to have a hardship. It has to be a unique site, but it not, doesn't say it has to be a unique hardship. And while they are, they're not actually the same provision. So if this site has to be unique, so they would have to demonstrate uniqueness of site, which is one of the terms, and I don't know if they can, and based on the uniqueness of site, they have a hardship. Not that they are the only ones who are affected by a particular hardship. But okay. if their site is not unique, they can't get the variance regardless of whether there's a hardship that applies to them. And if everyone else in the village, no one else in the village has a unique site, even if it's the same potential hardship, then someone else couldn't get it. But it's not that there's a unique hardship. And I don't know if the case law, I, I have not seen case law that said that, but uh, you know, I could be wrong. So if you no. think that it has to be a unique hardship, then I would want to see the case law that says it's, a, again, only assuming they're going for a unique var a right. use variant. I mean, a hardship that's unique to this property. is what That's I not what it says. That's not what the village law says. It says- Sorry, that I thought that that's- okay. The village law okay. says, um, and I'll read you village law. It says, um, without a showing that applicable zoning regulations and restrictions have caused unnecessary hardship. The applicant cannot render a reasonable turn that the alleged hardship um, is substantial, that the alleged hardship relating to the property in question is unique. Oh, you're right. It does say that more. So yeah, I take it back. Um, it does talk about the hardship relating to the property is unique, but again, it's talking about the site. So if they could, if everyone Correct. in the village had a hardship, but they were, because their site was different, for example, Correct. Everyone in the village has, can't do, and I'll just use this, has, can, has, can do curbside, but because of its location on Boston Post Road, they can't do curbside as would be allowed under the um, executive order, let's say. So they sure, couldn't operate. If, then the fact that the hardship isn't unique, but the application to the site is unique, would allow them to get the variance anyway. I Chair, think uh, Meg and, and, and Charles, I don't want to waste your time and the, the resources of the village with, in this respect. If it's an avenue we're going to pursue, I will certainly provide Amber and your board plenty, ample time. Again, I don't want to waste, you know, resources. Uh, times are tough and, and, you know, it's something that I'll discuss with um, our, our team. Uh, but I will say this, uh, Chair, that's one of the reasons when we were discussing the curbside pickup, I'd rather not have curbside, even though it's quote unquote permitted right now, on Boston Post Road because once school does resume, and we know we have two peak periods with the schools, a.m. and p.m. because of the hybrid model, it, it can get busy over there. And I completely agree with Abigail. I, I, I served and worked with the uh, Safe Routes of School. It, 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 you know, and thank goodness for Brian Dempsey and, and, and Elaine who did you know, a lot of good diligent work on this to establish you know, a, a safe approach to this. But again, I've got, I'm getting ahead of myself. We do appreciate the time and the effort. Um, you know, we remain excited about this concept and we remain excited about the fact that CHOP will be coming here to Lamarney Village, one form or another. So we- So really I have a few other items, Robin, before we wrap up. Um, Go ahead. For the, I have a few other items, questions for the building inspector and perhaps for council. Um, first, um, I'm asking the building inspector, doesn't this operation need a parking variance? Because um, if you just go with the indoor seats and the employees, they require 14 spaces and there's 12 on the lot. If we are going to consider the patio seats, which we did do for Mason and Rose, um, that would be additional seats. Um, so, but even just thinking about the indoor seats and the number of staff members that they have, they're short two spaces, which I may not be, just seems like it, it, I'm wondering why it's not applying for a parking variant. I thought they had enough when I looked at it. So if, if Meg is correct, um, Frank, then um, they would need one. So Frank, do you know, do you have the answer to that? I, I understand that you're going to have 32 seats inside, which is, you divide that one by four. 
and 12 of employees, which you divide by two, which is another six. So I came up with 14. Was my arithmetic wrong? They have and 20. then we have to also decide if we're, they are planning a 18 seats on the patio. And when we um, deliberated on uh, Mason and Rose, we included outdoor seats to increase the number of parking spaces that were required there. So we have a precedent when we're going to have established patio seats outside. So if you were going to count those divided by four, I don't know if the board would do it, that would bring the number up to 19. But mm -hmm. at, at least even with the indoor seats, it's two spaces short. Like I know you're very good with numbers. We've sat on enough committees together. I know you're very specific. Can you just do me a favor, just take a step back. So you have 32. So you're, are you, you're factoring in the seasonal outdoor seating in this? I just want to make sure that I understand. So, so what do we got? 32 divided by four is what? Right, eight. Right? Eight. eight, and then okay. you need. Eight. By the way, but this is embarrassing. If I got that wrong, that'd be really bad. But anyway, and okay. then you got you know under I asked you, I didn't tell you, I just let you say the answer, and then it, you divide employees by tw two, which is six. Fourteen. Right. Yeah, fourteen, and I see twelve on the lot. So that could very well be something that's reasonable and people are going to walk over. But again, I like I don't like to just gloss over it. If it needs a parking variance, it needs a parking variance. But we also must consider if we're going to talk about the 18 seasonal seats, which with heaters outside. This is, excuse me, it's Brian Dempsey. We did the traffic and site plan. There's 22 parking spaces on the site. Okay, and the, um, when I was delivered, when I drove around, it was 12, and the site plan, whatever I was given in the application, only showed 12. So that would be fine if you can show us where you're going to have 22 spaces. They're just not marked right now. The, um, that would be something. No. Yeah, That's there there is a site plan in the application that shows shows the spaces. The 22. I'm sorry, I, I missed that. I couldn't find you it. Anybody want, else? I can it? share my screen and show you to show you where the spaces are right now, if you'd like. Okay, please do that. Okay. That's Ralph. Yeah, please do that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sharing it right now. So we have reconfigured the parking. Uh, you know, based on the exit, we're not we're totally reconfiguring it. So when you come in, there's 11 spaces on this outside uh, row of parking. Another five here, and then these are the six employee spaces. So. You're looking at that's okay, where the. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know why I, I didn't see this. I'm not sure where I. I'm sorry, I didn't see this in your application. It, it's towards the end of the application on the electronic version. Yeah, I thought oh. I thought I saw that there was enough parking, but I didn't yes, look into it as carefully is. as Meg did. So okay. okay. Then um, I wondered if, according to um, where am I? Should I um, take under uh, thirty-two? 342-75B or D, um, if it doesn't require a site plan review, which is not our board, I, you know, it would not be something we have to worry about, but does it require site plan review as it is changing its use to something that requires more intensive parking? That, that's something, uh, you may be right, that's something for the building inspector to determine and Right. I just saw the letter where he said what was needed and perhaps it was only for the ZBA. It was not for the planning board. And um, also on this, I did try to see a site plan that was for the whole lot. I just saw something that was a little blurry. I wasn't sure what is the, what is the dimension of the building to the street line. There is a line and I couldn't quite read it. Is it 32.5 or something or 33? I will share my screen again and show it Thank you. you very much. Thank you. So, I might have not looked at the right plan. All right. There's an existing so the building. building to the Boston Post Road. Yes. yes. Is how how long? Uh, thirty foot at this closest point right here, it's thirty five feet to the right of way line, and another and there's roughly another twelve feet to the curb line. So this is a thirty five foot dimension right there as surveyed. Okay. I just From wonder why it has, to the property okay. owner. I just wonder why it has a freestanding sign. Um, it sounds like it's in range, but freestanding signs are permitted when it's 50 foot setback and there's a hardship. And no, I saw I saw the I saw that it was revised, but I never found the original permit um, that was given to the sign for the bank before it was revised. I just saw the one that when you were revised, the bank was revising the sign. Um, I didn't see any variants for the sign, so I was curious about that. Meg, I think the existing sign is right in this area here. 
I know it's existing. I couldn't find anywhere the, the original why it was allowed to be there because it required some kind of variance if it's not 50 foot setback from the street. Meg, when I foiled this, I actually, I, I came across quite a bit of information on this that goes back to um, 2008 when it was approved by the village of Amerinek. So I, I'll be more than happy to scan the documents I foiled. And I saw, I think, even think the 2008, I saw approval for yeah. changing, revising the sign mm -hmm. that it was appropriately, there was, it was applied for. And, but I just never saw, it requires a variance and there's nothing in there about the original variance as to why the, the building department. Right, and in fact, it, it does, there's a memo, uh, Meg, from February 20, 2009 that I'm actually looking from that says that signage was not part of the application. So, but I'll, I'll be happy. I know this was part of the package that we submitted, but I'll be happy to send you whatever you want. You know, what I foiled and all the documents on that. I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, I, I saw the, those seem to be around the years when the sign was revised, but the and, sign had already been existing. I didn't see anything the benefit, before when, when the sign was first installed. I didn't see anything from And that. to the benefit of Charles, so he understands what Meg is making reference to, and so my clients understand, traditionally, the seasonal outdoor seating is not factored in with the parking spaces. However, as Ms. Jurgen made reference to, I guess a, a recent decision or a recent resolution was passed where it was factored in. But that's just to Charles's benefit and also to my clients. I don't want them to think anyone's doing anything wrong. It's just in, in the past. But this is, again, something that we can explore uh, as we go forward with the application. Right. And for sure, I did not see that site plan where you had the additional parking spaces. No problem. So no problem. That. But, no problem. And then I would just like to see where what was the justification for the original uh, installation of that freestanding sign. I'll, I'll not, send you. Not, the, not the permit to, to revise the, the, the face of the sign, but to install the sign. I don't, I don't even know. I'd have to ask Ralph and uh, the team whether or not they were even going to use that sign. I, I don't even okay. know. If you're not going to use it, then it's, I saw it in a rendering that yeah, you had. I understand. Okay. Yes, the intent was to put in, to try to reuse the sign in its current location and change the, uh, you know, the facings to appropriately, um, you know, size. So, that was the intent. I, I'm speaking for, on be, you know, uh, Justin, you can verify that as the, uh, but I thought that was the intent to reuse that sign. Um, so I guess in the question to figure out is, A, was a variance ever granted? B, was it a pre-existing non-conforming sign? Yeah. Uh, in either of which cases it would be fine. Um, so, okay. So just well, to sum up, I hopefully I can sum okay. up Oh, sorry, Abby. Sorry, but in the spirit of raising questions now versus later, um, I did want to mention with the AKR memo and, um, you know, thinking through the traffic safety issues, I was surprised there was no mention of the sidewalks on Boston Post because I do believe those are illegal currently. They're too narrow and not always ADA compliant. So I would expect... Wait, the sidewalk? Yes. I'm, I'm not sure how that's, I don't, I mean, if the sidewalk was built by the village, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding what you're asking about. I'm if saying that in the AKRF memo, they're talking about safety measures and looking at the high school crossing and so on. And I'm saying that they, what they did not mention in there. So I'm just raising it as a question or as an issue for people to be thinking about is that the actual sidewalk on the side of Boston Post Road that goes from the high school to the HSBC is currently too narrow and in spots not ADA compliant because it's quite old and no longer meets regulations. So I would expect that in addition to, um, you know, the other things that the AKR people mentioned that there should be some consideration about um, sidewalks, that's all. I just so pedestrians on sidewalk is really what you're asking, the use of yes, the sidewalk. There'll be a lot of high school students okay. going to the chops, right? And mm -hmm. right now it's a very narrow pathway, not always so safe. So I'm just raising it as something that we should all be considering. Ms. Roberts, um, and I look forward to when we do go forward with the application. So mm -hmm. Brian, 
and uh, Elaine will be able to really go into depth about this because this is something that we've discussed and I, I share that concern as well. So we will certainly explore that and any other recommendations that could be made. I know my client would be more readily happy to accommodate. So Great. thank you. Thank you. Okay, so just to sum up for the next meeting, um, you will present us with a legal memo essentially to, ex, with all the case law and any other um, information that you have, any other definitions, citations, et cetera, that you have, including anything from that you want from uh, past, if there is any um, you know, legislative history or anything else to yeah. the board members. If, and um, you will also let us know if you can two weeks before the application, whether or not if we determine that you need a variance, you will be proceeding with the special permit without the, whether you will be requesting the use variance or whether you will be proceeding with the application of the building without doing any outdoor widget. obtaining widget. of food, outdoor obtaining of food. Um, separately and with respect to other questions, you will look into the question of the sign and maybe Amber can also as to historically why the sign is there and how it was permitted. You'll have your trap and now with, so that's a separate issue. Um, with respect to the special permit questions, as Abby raised, the traffic engineer will look into the sidewalk and the use of the sidewalk by pedestrians and the issue of safety there. Got it. I think, that, I think I've summed up, have any, anything, did I leave anything out? Amber, I'll get you also the foil information on the signage and we can work, we'll look through it together. And also Frank, I'll, I'll reach out to you as well on that. Uh, to the board, uh, this is Nick speaking again and respectfully and without having had the opportunity to speak to my attorney offline, just to be clear, the, the window is, a, it, it, the, the widget is a critical part of this, uh, of this um, restaurant for us. So the way our restaurants operate now um, require us to have this facility to be able to do this. So, um, uh, you know, we'll talk about what that means um, uh, procedurally, but, uh, but uh, this is not a, this is not something we're hoping we get, but just, you know, uh, this is something that is critical to the operation of the, of the restaurant. Let me ask you, is it, if we didn't have COVID, is it critical because of COVID or it's critical because of otherwise? No, it's critical otherwise. I mean, we now build restaurants to facilitate the way people want to eat, which is to get their food and leave as swiftly as possible. And so it's changed the size of the dining room. It's changed the back of house operation. It's changed the physical setup of where we make the food and how it works its way down the line. Um, and the, the overall, the, 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 the financial picture of the lease is based on having these multiple components of how we can get food out uh, and this is a critical one. In New York City now, for those of you who know us from New York City, we don't build restaurants. We don't, we don't build chopped that, we don't build any chops that you've seen in New York City. We only build to, to you know, pick up and delivery restaurants now. Um, the economics of the business have changed such that this is, this is, this is the future. Um, and so we're find, we're trying to find a, you know, a, a uh, uh, you know, the right community where we can, where we'll be able to do it. We're hoping it's this one. And, and you know what? And I apologize, Nick. I saw that you, I, I'm tr still trying to catch up with technology. I saw you sent that to me and I have absolutely no problem. It, it, it's a pressing issue. Uh, thank you, Nick, for jumping in with that. Okay. If no, if thank anyone you. else have anything, board members? Yeah, just to remind um, the staff to provide that, the legal information two weeks before the next meeting. Chair, I can't, I can't hear. I'm sorry. He said, he said to please provide it two weeks before the next. Don't forget no, that we need it two weeks. No problem. Before the next no problem, Greta. I got that. Thank you. If nothing else, then we will adjourn this hearing to the next meeting. Wonderful. Um, th again, thank you so much. Just if I can, my team, if you want to circulate a Zoom invitation so we could talk about this, that'd be great. So I apologize for using your airtime, but guys, I want to talk after this. No problem. Thank you. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy Here's New Year. To, uh, Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. All right, miss, I miss seeing you guys in, in, in court. Oh, I mean, in the well, village. Well, before you, before you go, I'm just, I think we're done with the public hearings now, been adjourned. Board members, do, we, do you have any other discussion you want to do or we want to wait till that was the so I, have, I, I have some other applications to 
some other items that have nothing to do with this application. Sorry. I'm only talking about this application right now. Does yeah, anybody else have anything on to, do any of the board members want to discuss anything on this application before we um, step, step away from this application? No. Okay. I just want to know because we could discuss. That's fine. So we'll wait till the next meeting to have further discussion. All right. Thank you, Mr. Spatz. Thank you, Mr. Marsh. Thank you, sure, other thank members you. of the applicant. Thank team. you. Have a great thank evening, everyone. Be safe. Thank you. How do I get off of this now? Let's see. So, Elaine, I guess we didn't. Oh, she's gone. Okay. I was going to say she's gone. Good. That's fine. Okay. Meg, did you say you had something back, else? Because that was what was on the agenda. Before we um, wait, before we go because it's not a public hearing let's go what's on the agenda so the next item on the agenda is just the 416 waverly avenue and we are just going to be adjourning the application um again uh, again so that's done i just want to say that that is uh case number 15 a 2018 416 waverly avenue and that application is being um adjourned the public hearing has been adjourned as well um before we go further i do want to say that one of the things and then make i'll let you raise whatever issues you wanted to. Um, one of the things that wasn't on this agenda and, that, and, and I noticed and I thought we'd just discuss it first is, you know, we had discussed, board members had discussed writing a letter to the village trustees about various language and terms in the code that are less than clear. Um, and I do think, and this reminds me of the fact that if we're doing that, we also have to add all the restaurant related terms you know, food service establishment and restaurant, some of which are allowed, some of which don't seem to be allowed, so, and which are not internally inconsistent. So I think our letter should be, you know, we should really have it longer, more inclusive. So, uh, and then we should have, that should be on the agenda for the next meeting and we really need to discuss it um, at the next meeting. Okay, Meg, you had some things you wanted to raise. I just wanted to ask about the status of a couple of resolutions that we had voted on and that I haven't seen to sign and file. Um, so Six, 600, of... which I'm sure you're asking about. Sorry? 600 Lorraine. That one and also 419 Mimaranek Avenue. Well, 600 Lorraine is being hopefully somebody, I, there was some, um, language problems with the last draft, even though we had, we had discussed it at the meeting and they made the resolution, but in reviewing the final one, I actually found some actual more, like some changes that needed to be made. So presumably Amber or Charlie will be making those changes. It's just technical. Right. So I, I, it's in its final stages. Um, I, I believe the most recent comment um, was regarding the vote. And so Ashley and I actually did go back and um, listen again to the recording and things like that. You know, it didn't have the list of who being voted taken separately, and it actually was voted on all at once. So we'll, it's it's almost there. It's almost there. okay. So okay. that's why. So that's so, so that answers that one. Yeah, and then and then I don't want to. Four nineteen Mamaroneck Avenue. What's four nineteen? You have to. I'm sorry, I don't. That's the one that used to be Mozart's. Oh, whatever happened with that? It's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. It was, seems like it was so long ago at this point. It was very long ago. It was not a controversial. The language was not no, that no, difficult. No, no, I don't stuff. know. I will, go, it could have gotten lost in again as stuff got lost in transition. I'll go back and look at my records and Amber, if you would go back and check the village records. Thanks. Yeah, I, I mean, if I, I just it sounds it like there might be an opportunity to bring Charles into the conversation on the resolution since, um, the, well, wait, know, the resolution be for moving forward. Um, so, uh, so, go ahead. So, when I represent boards, typically, and I spoke with um, Robin about this a little earlier, you know, if there's a resolution you guys want me to look at that's been previously prepared, happy to do it. Um, as we go forward, um, if there's, you know, a smaller matter that you guys want to vote on without a resolution present, what we can do is talk about a justification for your decision. Uh, you can vote on it. Then I can go back and memorialize things and resolutions. Um, you know, I, what I'll do is morph what the, the village is used to with a lot of the templates that my office uses around the state. Um, we'll take uh, from similar villages that, that we represent. Um, you know more complex matters, what I would suggest we do is uh, have a resolution ready before any vote 
um, and circulated. My office will prepare that. Um, and then as, I, as I explained to you, well, that's what we're doing. And we need to take a straw poll because we have to be able to give you directions before as to which way the board is going before you can prepare a draft resolution. So let's just take this application pending before us. If we decide to grant it, the special permit, because the in interpretation is more complicated. If we decide to grant the special permit, I mean, we'll take a vote. We may decide to grant it or not. And if we decide to grant, you can't draft a resolution unless we voted to decide or tentatively taken a straw poll. Based on that straw poll, you would then prepare a resolution that was consistent with the straw poll. Because yeah, we would- The way I like to typically characterize that is um, you know you would vote on directing my office to prepare a resolution either in support or in denial of the project. But again, uh, we're not, we, we're we're not just, we don't want to give you just that up. requirement of to do something in support. We, if we're going to support it, we want to give you the reasons. Oh, we're going to establish the reasons that we are voting for it. We don't want you to say, okay, we don't. We're not going to vote and say we don't. Think it's appropriate for us to vote and say um we want you to direct let's take this one just because it's here we don't want you to to vote we don't want you to direct a resolution just please prepare a resolution supporting shop to create a special permit no we would say we would like you the resolution is to prepare that this is the basis on which we're going to be granting that special permit because that's it's our job to do that not your job to do that so yeah. we tell you what to do and then and, and, and we don't take the final vote. If you want to fix the format a little, that's okay. We're not struck necessarily on the format. Sorry, Meg, what were you saying? And then, so that was just a straw poll. So we all know which way, what way we need to write the resolution. We don't take our final vote. We keep the open, the, you know, we take our final vote when we can see the document in front of us so that we also have time. And we would like it ahead of time of the meeting so that we can have comments when we get there. There are small editorial changes. Or big ones, yeah. either way, but even, yeah. Big ones might delay it even longer, but I'm saying some of the wording and stuff. Right. Um, but going but back that, to that the- Meredith Avenue should have been written. I don't know where it, I, it got. I, you know, that's an interesting question. The 419, I just went and looked. Um, I don't even see a draft. So, um, you know, just in my looking at my, I usually get a draft and I save them in order to edit them. I don't see the draft resolution. So Amber, if you would please double check what happened with that application, um, that would be great. But the 600 you should be having, I guess, based on Amber next week. But it was done. It was just some, as I said, some you know little things that had to be corrected. Sure thing. I'll, I'll look into that and I'll send a. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting one that you had still had that. We haven't had a lot of applications, so I kind of remember. So it was, there were eight applications. I might have dropped one, but I was looking for that one. To Do you remember come. what okay. hearing date that was from? Approximately November. Which meeting date? Was it still, when did we absolutely vote? That's what I'm October. looking for. October? I, mean, I was just curious. Maybe. Um, well, uh, hold on a second. I've got, I just opened the, because I, the, the, oh, sorry. Why did it show up? No, it show, we voted at the, the reason you didn't see this, we only voted on the last meeting. At 419, no, I'm not 419? Yep, I've got it, I just pulled up the agenda. Deliberations oh. on closed applications. Okay. From so, December 3rd? No, December, December 3rd. Oh, Roaster Cafe, I know why. We didn't vote on it, Meg. No, we I'm didn't. not talking. I'm not talking. Maybe I have the wrong street number. I'm you not said 419. About, so I'm that's sorry. I might have the strong, wrong street number. I'm not talking about coffee roasters. I'm talking about it's the same name on the application. Oh, it's, the same it's not the same name on the application. It's about, about Mozart, Cafe Mozart. Yeah, it's not the same name on the application. That's why it's the same owner, but it's a different LLC. I'm sorry if I got the wrong street number. It's the Meredith Avenue and it's where Cafe Mozart yeah, used yeah. to be. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not for, yeah, that's not 419, sorry. Okay, but then when we go back to 419, Chipotle. what happened? Sorry? 805 Mamaronek Avenue? Uh, it's on the corner of Mamaronek Avenue and, what's the name of that, what street is that? 
don't know. I could look it up and send it to you, Amber, what okay. the street address is. Um, well, anyway, what that we... one was a while ago. Meg is correct. Um, 419 is roasted. We did. I knew which one you were right. thinking of, but 419 is roasted, which we didn't vote on. But I also would like to know what happened to 419, because I thought if we were going to vote to deny the special permit, it just seems to have disappeared. We weren't going to vote to deny. We were waiting for them to come up and demonstrate that they had satisfied all of the requirements of the village, the electrical code issues. Right. That they needed to prove that they had the necessary um, inspector certify that the electric wiring, electric panel, whatever it was, was okay. correct. What and happened just, to that application? Frank, did we ever get anything from them? I haven't heard back from them at all. I'm not sure that they've complied with the electrical. So if they haven't, we had said last time to warn them if they didn't do it, we were going to deny the special permit. We were going to vote on it. And now it's just off the agenda. I, I, um, I'm going to be back in the office tomorrow. I'll follow up on that. Yes, I'll please. Because, and then, so Amber, that will need to go back on the agenda one way or the other because we did not vote to approve it. And do you remember we told them, hey, please make it clear. If you don't come, we're going to give you one more month or we're voting, we're good voting to deny the special permit for new ones. So, um, but I, I don't, I do know the other one you mean. Let me see if I can. <clears throat> 308. Um, 308 Maranek Avenue? 308 Maranek Avenue is the one I think that you're looking for. That was Hold on. in November. Uh, November 16th. I, I, sorry, it's 308. That, that was approved in November, I think. I'm, I'm double checking. Yes, November, at the public hearing on November 5th. Um, my guess is, Meg, is that it literally just got lost in the shuffle between, um, in the, in the, in the no, shuffle no, no. between the lawyer who wasn't always doing their, um, you know, and sometimes I guess I didn't remember that one. I missed it in the follow-up, 308. But we had a resolution um, that we voted on in November. So that should be close to final. I don't recall there being any certain- It wasn't that difficult, but we did have some conditions. We talked yes. about the windows closed and things like that. And yeah, but I, as I say, I think the resolution had most of that. I don't know that there was any substantive changes. It just Sorry, they're, they're saying there is a draft resolution? Yeah, there's a, I, and it was a draft that was voted on, and as I recall, but it was done at the November 5th meeting. So, I mean, we've got a vote down. Five to, you know, well, five of us voted to grant the special I permit. think Doug did not, Doug didn't vote for it. Um, I, we have a vote of five, it was five in the resolution. Oh, maybe. So, maybe. Well, I would go back and check. I thought he was he was unhappy with the music outside and didn't, didn't I, vote for it. Uh, that may, whatever it was, it, we, it has to be finalized and signed. So, um. okay, that's all my questions. That was good. Good, um, particularly the the three hundred eight was a good catch. Um, it did get lost in the shuffle. Um, um, and, and so one thing uh, I remember just administrative item that Abby had brought up was um, for work sessions, if we are to continue those um, in the fashion that we have been, um, that she cannot make Tuesdays. So if we, I know we're kind of thinking about how we're structuring that. Um, well, wait, we have a calendar. I thought when we set the calendar up, the calendar was set based on what everybody said. Are, are, are any of the dates- You have a calendar. The, the work session dates were not published on the calendar. Um, I don't mean that it was published on the calendar. I mean, I thought that there was a calendar circulated among the board members of the work sessions dates. There, there was. Okay, were those dates, and I don't remember them now, were those dates include Tuesdays? Were those dates on Tuesdays? Um, it, it would seem that they were. Um, I, I had informed Will that- um, Yeah, that's why I thought we took care of, that was done and I don't remember now. Okay, well, let's discuss the more substantive question. Are we gonna, do we want a work session before the next meeting? That's the first question, because whether there is one in the calendar or not, do we want one? So, um, 
is the work. So, and then again, the question would be the purpose. Purpose and and I one of the things that I discussed with 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 earlier both with both Amber and Charlie was the issue of what is the purpose of the work session and one purpose of a work session could be to kind of to get like Meg's questions and my questions and on you know additional in, and Abby's questions for additional information I remember Greg had, Greg had separate questions the questions of asking the applicant for additional information like about the parking pedestrian safety is a good one would have been something that we could have discussed at the work session. Um, and then the applicant would know that they should have that information. That's something we could send in by email to, to, to Amber and say, hey, you know, does that have to be something we all agree we need? Or if I'm looking for some information or have a question about something, could I just send it in my email to Amber? I don't and think so. I don't think we can all just, everybody is gonna, can, oh, Meg has a question today and then Abby has a question tomorrow and Greta raises something three days and now, and then Meg raises it again. And then I come up with something that doesn't work. Now, how is that different than, have, than them waiting? How is that different than us? Have we ever shot down somebody when we go to a work session and someone says, I would like this piece of information? No, have we ever I, that's not the point. The point isn't that you can't, everybody can't raise something. The point is, it's not fair to Amber to have all of these things sent to her separately um, for her to, um, oh, Meg asked me this thing on Tuesday and Greta asked me something yesterday and Robin is asking me something um, on Friday. And I don't know if they're the same thing. Do I have to look for three different things? Maybe I get back to Megan. It's not, that's the reason. So I'm, if we don't- I'm work, we can try it and see if it's really that volume. I definitely don't want to put a whole lot of pressure on Amber and make a lot of work. But if we're just talking about two items that, that come in or I don't, I don't think that in the work session, we really have so many questions and it's so much easier. So a week before, because what it is, you're saying, oh, we had so much stuff that we're asking Amber and we're waiting for a week before the, 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 the uh, meeting to happen to then tell her about it and to ask the applicant to that's bring it. My, that's not, actually, that's not what I was saying, Meg. So uh, let me finish, please. Um, but the issue is what is the purpose of the work session? If it's to discuss things like what we might need from the applicant. And a lot of times we come up with different questions as part of discussion, we often, do that. Now you review it and you think of one thing and then if somebody else raises a point and that makes you think of something else. So a lot of questions come up during discussion. So that's the first thing. But the issue is here is a timing thing. Um, you know, how does that timing and does the timing work? Now, I think work sessions make sense for, um, may make sense, but I'm not sure that. And so, you know, one reason, one thing that work sessions sometimes do is, is applicant is members of the board uh, before we calendar the agenda. So four applications come in and we all review the applicate the agenda and we review the application. And before they're calendared for the public hearing, we say, okay, we want these three additional items. Um, we want these three additional items. And before we can start, you know, before we can have the public hearing and maybe that's it, but then there's a timing issue. So I think we need to figure out if we need a work session and what the purpose of any such work session would be. As long as we have such few applications on the agenda, isn't that something looking at the next month's agenda, isn't that something we could just do at the end of our public hearings? I, I agree with you. I agree with you. So the first question is, so there's two things. We have tentative dates that were circulated. And if those dates don't work, because Abby can't make any of them, then we're gonna to have to rethink the dates. So that's, a, that's question one. Question two, or if anybody else, I just mean, because Abby says specifically no Tuesdays. And I was no Tuesdays because that's when I was teaching, but now I'm no Mondays because I'm teaching on Mondays this semester. So uh, it can't be Mondays or Tuesdays. Um, and I don't know if anyone else has a set date that they can't make, day. So the first question is if we're gonna have one, it can't be Mondays or Tuesdays. So Robin, would it make sense for us to just all go around and kind of just briefly state our view on this? Um, so, but wait, wait, just hang on one second and then we can do that. Okay. And then the second question is if we are gonna have work sessions and what we talked about at the last work session was we should make our decision each month. We have tentative dates and whether we actually have the work session should, we should figure it out every month. So do we need one for this month? I would say we don't, but I don't know what anyone else thinks. Um, and that's what I'm saying, it's two separate things. So 
I, and I thought that's how we had left it, that we were going to decide each month whether we thought we needed a work. I guess on um, as needed basis. Right, I think that's what we decided. Uh, so I don't think we need one for next month. Uh, if anyone else wants to give their thoughts on that, please do so. Amber, can you tell us, give us an idea of how many applications are coming up? Is it a huge number of applications are gonna be added or is it? Well, we currently have one in the pipeline for the next meeting. Um, there were two on this meeting. I'm not certain that if, um, in terms of, you know, Frank, maybe you can speak to um, what's in the pipeline in terms of what's coming into the building department. Um, but right now it's like at a two to three um, application. But just one new one and then the, then what we have on the agenda so that we've already Ooh, listened that to. Is, that is correct. I, I was thinking in terms of new applications. So we're talking about like potentially two, potentially three. Um, depending on what comes in. The, the submission deadline for the February is not, um, has, is next week, I believe it's the 14th. Let's see. Because in my mind, if it's one, then it's usually it's not gonna be that hard. If, if all of a sudden there are- We are getting more. Um, that's, what, that's what I would say. I mean, I'll just mention that, um, Today, the, the application with chalk, the um, Mr. Stacks came up with um, all this case law that wasn't provided to us for the work session. So, you know, I'm not sure the work session that we had um, a couple of weeks ago made that much difference because new information was provided at the actual application. So I guess for the next, we don't need one. Uh, every one of board members, do you think we need one for the next meeting or not? No. Okay. Um, no. Now, so I think that what Char what Charlie uh, had raised was the idea of, as I said, to have a work session to look at uh, applications that came in before they're put on the agenda. But as we discussed, there's a real timing issue. You know, they have to be in 21 days. There's a 10 day notice. It would have to be within that. Plus, Amber has to, they have to prepare letters to them and things. The work so, sessions are so in order to do, accomplish that goal, you know, we have to have our work session like between 20 days and 15 days before the meeting. And that probably just doesn't logistically work. So um, if that was the purpose, we'd have to think about some of these other dates. And we don't have to think about that. We don't have to decide that today, obviously, but it's something just to keep in mind as we think about procedures for the board, whether that would make sense uh, for the board members to review the draft applications before they're put on the agenda uh, to see if there's additional items you think are needed before it can be put on the agenda um, or do it as we do now, which is if there's additional items, we just do what we normally do, which is adjourn the public hearing to the next meeting to get the items that weren't distributed or handed in or provided. So just another thought. I mean, personally, I, I'm obviously all in favor of expediting things, but I think, you know, for the work sessions, uh, where I would see additional meetings being of value is when we have real meaty topics that we actually really need to dig into. You know, for example, I can see us spending an entire session really digging into the chopped interpretation issue with the case law at a later day. For me, have, you know, breaking those sessions out so that we can just focus on that one topic and not have it block a lot of the smaller ones would make sense. But besides that, I, you know, having the monthly working sessions just to have them does not make sense to me. One thing you guys could also consider at, on a case by case basis, you can always call a special meeting. Those special meetings can be called at any time. They can be any time of day. It's totally at the board's pleasure if you feel it necessary. Right, but again, as I was explaining, the village has a lot of other board meetings and doing it since they all have to be open to the public um, and we all have to be available and we all work you know, has a lot of issues before it. So I, that, that was the idea, at least part of the idea that we talked about at the last work session, which was to have these tentative dates so that 
if we were going to have a meeting, we at least knew those were doable. Um, and if not, then we didn't, we can, right? So we're, yeah, right, um, we could always call a special meeting. So I guess we're not having a special meeting correct in January, right? Right. Does everybody agrees? So uh, then I guess, Amber, can you go through that tentative list of dates? See if any of them are not, are Mondays or Tuesdays. And if not, then that list is still good. And if there are, then that list is not good because we know those are dates that the village is available for these meetings. Um, and so, and I'll share those dates. Um, and, then we can and then we'll update the dates if necessary. Great. Sounds good. Okay, anything else before we adjourn? I have a couple things, Robin. Sure, one, go ahead. One, um, it'd be handy if in the application, the, the issue that Meg brought up about the parking issue number of spaces required, what's actually there. Um, that's not clearly cut in the application. It'd be handy if there was a place in the application where you, you know, the, if there was required parking, you'd say required parking spaces required, how many are actually there. So you don't have to kind of be counting the spaces and try and find where that information is and just have it readily available. So, so that's, that's reasonable to, to require, if it's not set out on the, um, in the zoning calculation table that they need to provide a separate chart that shows, or a separate just chart that shows um, the required parking spaces and how many are being provided to satisfy the requirement. So, um, that's, so Amber, could you make that part of the app application in the future? I'm sorry, to make part of the application. That question that they asked, how many required parking, how many spaces are required? And how make many sure are that everybody required? provides it explicitly if it's not already there, because a lot, some applicants do provide it as part of the zoning table or yeah, other. Not just so, explicit, like if you could put it in a spot where we all could find it, because like in CHOP, when it's like they have three different things and you're looking through it and trying to discover it. And over here is the seats and somewhere over here is the site plan. It was hard. So it would just be great if it was very visible as part of the application towards the beginning of the application. Okay. Well, I think this is the bigger question though. I mean, you're talking about place, um, Meg. I think that's something that we would need to fit. We've talked about revising the application, if you recall, many times. And I think we need to get that done and maybe it's time to do it. Um, and th at that point, when we do that, we can place it in the application in the appropriate spot. I think it's sort of hard to do now, but I do think we need to do all of these, co this comment is raising that we need to get back to the application now, but in order to do that, men, a long time ago, Betty, we had a draft application, then Betty Ann made revisions. And I think we saw another draft and I had comments. I don't remember if anyone else did. Um, I think maybe Meg did. I honestly don't remember at this point because um, it was so long ago, but we did have these draft, we did have a draft revised application. I think that it behooves us now, I think now that we're recognized to, to actually do that and maybe we could actually, that would be something that might be appropriate when we have a draft to schedule a work session to discuss revising the application. I think Charlie, if you can, take a look at the application um, and the what we have now and any recommendations you have. And if Amber, you can- I'd be able to find what we were working on as a draft too, that I could just send it in. Um, so yeah. what we were, were, what we have, I mean, I had it in hard copy. I don't know if I still, it was, it was long enough ago record. that it was in hard copy. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll look and see if I have something. Yeah, I'll look sure too. Um, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if I do because I don't know how would I, and I might have sent it to Gret to to Betty Ann, in which case I might have it in in an email. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I'm sorry, Gret. Was there anything else on the application form since you raised the parking one, which is a good point? Um, I don't have any other point on the application. I, I have a question about process um, and procedure with respect to litigation matters that we may be a named party to. Um, I don't. There is. 
I guess one, maybe two litigation matters that we're named party to. I think there's some due dates coming up with respect to one. What's the process for, I don't know if we have to go into executive session to discuss this or we can just talk about it generically. What's the process for um, showing papers um, before they're filed? Um, how, what how the comments work? are? What the village is preparing as, 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 as comments for the litigation? We don't usually see them. The, the lawyers who are drafting it prepare all of the papers and submit them. Um, if they need a signature from any of the board members, which is normally would be me, um, then I would see it. But otherwise, the board members have not historically looked at the litigation papers. Mm. So I, I, we, we can, I mean, if you something you want to see, we can ask. But I actually, I'm, I don't know. I mean, you know. Um, we could ask, but I, you know, and then it raises, I mean, you have to be, there's confidentiality things and we have to be sure about that. Um, so we, we it would be privileged, I assume we'd have to double check that. But so if you're gonna wanna see it, we can raise it with the litigation council on any, whatever matters are currently in litigation, but normally we don't see them unless there's something, they might ask us questions if there's specific issues. Um, otherwise it's all based on the record and the public hearing. So they look at, the documentation. They look at the, you know, they're, the the all of the evidence is either in a public hearing or is in the documentation. So uh, they don't necessarily true? need us. Is that true with all with the other boards that they don't they don't look at the materials before their file? Not necessarily. There's no required. Not necessarily. There could be some specific um, matter for which they do for some reason. But yes, Charlie, is that do you have different experience? How do you deal with it? That's generally the experience. Um, however, if there is something particular that you want to look at or add, you know, I know our firm has been uh, involved in some litigation uh, representing the village. Um, we also have been retained as litigation counsel for the village. And our, we have a specific land use litigator in our firm. His name is John Henry. Um, and I'm happy to circulate his contact information uh, to everyone. To the extent the ZBA is a, is a party, um, you're more than happy to review any papers. Yeah, we're not currently, you're not currently representing the village on any of the litigation that involves the ZBA, or are you as, I mean, if you are, it's not, it's news. I haven't seen that, any of those. Um, I, I haven't been involved in the case. It, it might be a planning board case. It's a planning board. The one that they're current, that you're currently representing the village on is a planning board case. Uh, the ZBA is not a party to it. Okay. Okay. So there, there's the answer, Greta. So if there's some litigation that you specifically want to see copies of documents on, we'll raise it with the litigation council handling that matter. Okay. But the the the, the process, the um, common process, is to, for the lawyers to file it themselves without anybody looking at it beforehand. That's Correct. Okay. That was my question. Correct. You can, of course, since we're the client. Can't of the board can't of course see it, but okay. I just, I just want to know what the common practice was. Sure. Anything else before we adjourn the meeting for today? Okay. Um, uh, so, okay, Meg, you and I will look for all of the previous drafts of the application and maybe we can find them. Um, and be good to get a revised application. Um, okay. Um, Thank you, everyone. It's nice, nice to meet you, you Charlie. Is there a make I have a motion to close the to close to to uh, close the meeting to adjourn the meeting? I make a motion to close. I second. All right, uh, Meg. Yes. Greta. Yes. Abby. Yes. Then I vote yes. Okay, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Good night, okay. everyone. Good night. Good night.